Okay, so I'd like to uh, welcome you back to the 2012 Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Congress and we are honoured to have Alexei Shirov here with us to go over his amazing victory against Yusupov, uh, a candidate for best game prize and um, well, what a game it was. <laughs> it's, uh, very interesting, very interesting stuff. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, well, well, I think the game was just very exciting. I mean, it's. Uh, I didn't know the theory of this line and Arthur knew it very well and then I immediately got into some kind of trouble so then uh, I think I found all my moves uh, not to lose the game immediately and then it became complicated. Okay, so we can go Okay, through. so we'll so have a look at the game and um, okay, I think thank you. you. There's more than one glass of wine in this game. Uh, yes, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> I think uh, the bottle should be flowing. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so let's have a look. We'll go through the opening and we'll get to where the action so happens, I guess. So normally this bishop g5 is supposed to be quite uh, rather quiet. Approach, yes, that's so what we were saying. Uh, <laughs> yeah. nice so uh, very strategical move. And so on, but okay. So, uh, so I make short castle. So the idea of short castle is that if White now plays e4, I can play d5. And okay, it okay. Seems like he's rather comfortable. I once won the game as White against Vasilius Katronius like this, but I didn't like very much my position after the opening. So after that game, I was happy to be black here as well. So, but okay, okay. c3 is a more um, just in the sense that. If I play anything except d5, then white of course goes e4, and okay, then uh, so I can to choose between the pierce, uh, pierce-like of positions uh, d6, e4, knight b7, and e5. So it's uh, more or less like pierce defense, but uh, or play d5. But o honestly, I didn't know any theory after d5, so I just thought. I would uh, make some logical development moves, and then <laughs> suddenly I got into trouble immediately. So, <laughs> so e3. So I played knight d7, bishop d3. Okay, I thought there is nothing wrong with this plan, rook e8 and e5. Uh, because uh, if I play queen e8 with the same idea, e5, white can play bishop f4, uh, attacking the c7 pawn, and so I have to spend a tempo on c6, and then white, of course, can play h3, so I cannot get out the bishop out of diagonal. So that's what I most thought, why rook e8 was better than. So, okay, he played castling. Uh, e5, e4. Well, I couldn't believe that if white plays e4 in two moves, not in one, black should uh, be in any trouble. But the problem is that uh, this um, the thing that I played, it, it seems that it uh, doesn't work at all. So maybe I should have, should have, maybe I take on e4 first. Knight takes a four, e4 and maybe h6 here, but then then the problem is that white <coughs> takes on f6 with a knight. I have to take with a knight. Ah, no, no, this this looks okay. Uh, no, no, excuse me, maybe it takes with the bishop, but then I can also take back the bishop. So maybe this is something w what I should play here. It's uh, This looks... And after knight takes e4, h6, uh, if white uh, goes uh, bishop h4, then... Uh, well, first of all, G5 is interesting, but then maybe knight of G5 is possible, so I don't know, it's, uh, it's complicated, of course. Mm. But maybe I just can take uh, uh, take on D4 here. Oh, but no, no, no. Well, it looks like uh, it's okay. So, problem after D takes E4, knight E4, H6, okay, I don't see that many problems here, so... But... I chose the other move order because I thought there was absolutely nothing wrong with this. Taking on d4 first, c takes d4, uh, d takes e4, knight e4, h6, and so on. <coughs> our true plate, <coughs> queen b3, immediately without thinking, so I knew that he was still in his preparation. Must have been a, a scary time for you. Of course. Uh, <laughs> so here I thought for yeah. almost 50 minutes. Uh, yeah. And played rook e7. There's some Knight horrible variations we looked at. Uh, mm. I mean, uh, someone someone suggested rook e6 as yes, well, but that uh, was I considered uh, what I considered as an alternative. Yeah. But after rook e6, I didn't like that he goes simply bishop h4. Yeah. So and after g5, he just takes on f6, uh, plays uh, mm. bishop g3, and I thought that okay. I'm left with a lot of weaknesses, and my rook is somehow quite mm -hmm. silly on e6. So I can. Play rook b6 now, but why just goes queen c2, 
third well, attack in the pawn, so I go maybe rook c6, but queen goes to g2, and finally, okay, it's a normal kind of uh, position with isolated pawn, but my rook on c6 is very strange, so... Okay, okay I don't know. Maybe if I could see what would happen, I would uh, still play rook e6, but I played rook e7, thinking that he has to take on f6, and that uh, after some exchanges it would still <coughs> be equal position, so... Here, uh, actually, I even... I noted on my score sheet because Arthur made like a record in modern chess. He thought on next uh, move for one hour, twelve minutes. I think one since hour, minutes. Uh, we got to two hours on forty minutes uh, on, on forty moves, this might be uh, the record because I remember some stories when people thought like one mm. hour and a half, but I think this was the times when there were two hours and a half or forty moves. So this might easily be a record uh, of thinking because okay. It's uh, it's almost impossible to think more on one move when you have only two hours to complete 40 moves. So. But he played the move which I didn't expect at all. He played this 95. I missed it completely. So I was asking myself, what are they two thinking about? So because okay, it looks like he just has to exchange on f6. It's more or less equal. Probably he has some precise moves both from both sides are required. But okay, and then 95. Goodness. And then my uh, next thought was, but why to think uh, more than one hour on such a natural attacking move? So, <laughs> <laughs> so. Mm. Okay, so. and uh, I, I didn't have uh, on my clock one hour and twelve minutes to think on my answer, so I had to take decision quicker. I think here I spent twenty-seven minutes on my next move. So <laughs> no, maybe maybe twenty-five to or twenty-six, something like this. Okay. The only alternative that I saw uh, to taking on g5 was uh, sacrificing the exchange. Knight takes e5, okay. knight f6, uh, bishop f6, uh, bishop f6, queen d4. But first of all, I wasn't sure I can have enough compensation after bishop takes e7. Okay, I can try maybe queen takes d3, and in end game I should probably have certain drawing chances, although... Ah, maybe not, because he takes and plays rook d1. Ah, yes, bishop f5, he plays g4. No, no, the end game is lost, so... So I have to take then with the knight, and... Uh, okay, he can take, play rook d1, bishop f5, queen b7. I have some compensation for the exchange, but probably not enough for equality. But what I want <coughs> to say, no, <coughs> notice is also that he probably has... Bishop takes g6. So... And after bishop g6, uh, yeah, I don't know if, uh, if I have any move. After bishop e6, he goes queen g3. It looks like white is winning, so... Is ah, but, ah, no, no, but he... No, no, excuse me, the, I saw this. Here, rook e6, I think I'm more or less... I, I'm still surviving, more or less. Okay, that's, uh, that's what mm. I thought. So, it's so okay, maybe bishop... Okay. So the main problem was, of course, bishop takes e7. So I have to take knight takes d3 and rook a d1, bishop f5, queen takes b7. And as I say, I have some compensation, some attack, but it should not be enough. So. Okay. So, S but okay, fortunately I saw that after hg5, I'm not losing the game immediately. So knight f7, I play knight c5. So, okay, so he has... Um, so this is the other possibility, maybe yes, he can... Uh, uh, ma maybe I was mostly afraid of d takes c5 here. Okay. Um, because, okay, after I take on f7, he can take knight takes g5. But, but the point is, of course, I can play queen d5. And mm -hmm. So, okay, he doesn't seem... Uh, after all, doesn't seem to be so problematic. Uh, but, um, of course, white cannot be worse either. I mean, just exchange on d5, take on f7, and uh, oh, I think white will never be worse in this position. Also, sometimes maybe the move like c6 is possible after taking rook c1. Well, I don't know, it's uh, complicated, of course. Mm -hmm. but, uh, okay. Okay, so, so if knight takes c5, I take on g5. So now again, after bishop g6, I play queen d5. Getting to the end game. Uh -huh. No, sorry, sorry. sorry. Knight x e five instead of uh, knight f six. That's what. Uh -huh. So okay. I have to take on f seven. Yeah. <coughs> so and now of course uh, critical is bishop c four. Mm -hmm. So uh, queen f eight is the only move. And okay, now my plan is c six knight d five. 
if it, if this plan works, then it means that. I think we had a look at some line with here, C6, and now, uh, well, we couldn't see anything clear. Um, no, I thought I mean, I'm so more or less doing okay. I think, I think what uh, Artur played was m really the most dangerous mm -hmm. because he practically yeah. wins the third pawn by force. So, yeah. so this knight f6, bishop f6, and and also and the other problem is that everything is totally forced. So d takes c5, rook f7, uh, so bishop g6, queen f8 on the move again. Uh, I was also worried about moves like c6 here, but probably this is not what he should really do because, uh, okay, I can after all just take it and then develop, so no, it's probably not. Nice. No, f4 and f5 is uh, is definitely very strong. I think someone so else, uh, someone suggested maybe this is interesting. I don't know, was some idea of this? Is I don't know if it's possible or not. But, but uh, what happens if I just uh, play c6 and uh, play rook g7? So Maybe it's similar to the game, but okay. Yeah, but, uh, yeah it's worse than the game, isn't it? So no, 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 I think uh, no, I think f five was very strong because yeah. after f five it's very difficult to find a move here. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, so I played bishop d seven. I thought this was on was the only move. So so now a good question is what happens if he takes on f seven and takes on b seven uh, because I have two very strong bishops, but he has so <coughs> many pawns. Well, still, I had, I had a firm belief that um, with active bishops somehow I should not be that <laughs> bad. Maybe just play rook e8 now. It's, uh, but okay, queen c7, <laughs> it's the fourth pawn by now, so I don't know. No, no also rook d1 is strong. Mm, I don't know. So maybe... Okay, um, I'm just thinking now that after queen takes b7, I probably should give uh, the intermediate check on uh, f4 and then play maybe rook e8. But okay, then queen c7 again. Mm. Hmm. Mm, yeah. And if queen d5, queen d6, <laughs> or. Mm. Well, queen d5, I can just play queen f4 uh, qu or queen g3. Okay. So, what is? No, but I don't understand. <coughs> no, but I think they saw something after Queen takes B7. I didn't think it was. Do you have Bishop E5 here? Yeah. Mm, some Queen yes. H, Queen H5 maybe. Yes, that's true. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Here Bishop E5. Yeah, so maybe this is what I should play then. Uh, also, okay. Okay, my bishops are very strong, but... Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of pawns. <laughs> a lot of pawns, exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I mean, rook f4 looks a very natural move to uh, to bring this rook into the attack as well, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, maybe this bishop f7 is also interesting, but... Uh, yeah. So now I play bishop okay. c6, once again the only move. Okay, he played king h1. <coughs> um, I was... Very afraid he would just uh, take on f7, take uh, on g4 with check. I must play king f8 and play queen h3. So white has rook and three pawns <coughs> against two bishops, and white keeps attacking. So, and now mm. I thought my only move should be rook e8, just to prevent rook from going to e file. And if rook d1, rook d2, rook e2, and okay, I didn't see a win for him. So, and afterwards we discussed it a little bit with. Also with Peter Swidler and uh, Peter said, well, if White doesn't win immediately, he should be worse, actually. So I'm not sure if uh, this is, uh, if uh, maybe this is a little bit emotional, but uh, okay. It, it's true that if I don't lose immediately, uh, then I should uh, probably not lose at all. <laughs> Let's put it uh, like this uh, in a more diplomatic way. So. Uh, mm -hmm. But okay, White can try maybe Queen H6 check and then some move like H4, just advancing the pawn a little bit. And okay, but, then but maybe I have time for moves even like Queen takes A2. No, well I thought maybe H4 now, just uh, okay. just to <laughs> make the King safer. So okay, but okay. 
I have some moves like Bishop E5, maybe it's not, it's not good. Uh, I wonder what the engine would say. For sure, the engine at the beginning will say that white is better, but maybe after some getting into some depth, uh, things will not be so easy. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the game, Arthur played King H1. Well, I felt that it should be <coughs> wrong because um, somehow, hey, he gives me more time to develop my pieces, but. But his idea was different. He wanted to play rook takes g4 and queen h3. So if he played rook takes g4 immediately, I would take on c5 with a check and play then queen d5 probably, or bishop d5. But OK, so after rook, uh, king d1, I have to play rook d8. So he played rook d4, bishop d5. So despite the fact that I'm still three pawns down, and um, okay, he here I was already feeling optimistic. So I thought, I thought the worst is over. So <laughs> So I thought uh, I should not lose this game any longer. So, so and therefore when he played queen h3, I then uh, rook g7, and then started uh, checking. I almost without thinking went king e7 because I already wanted to play for a win. I thought the game is so interesting that it cannot be just end <laughs> ended by this perpetual check. So, but when Arthur played queen a3. Uh, I nearly regretted my decision because I realized that uh, okay, okay. He's, uh, he's still <coughs> attacking. Okay, fortunately I still had some time while Artur had very little time. And I saw that by just giving this fourth pawn I'm uh, arranging, well, I'm consolidating my pieces and uh, yeah, it seems that uh, White is, uh, uh, White's attack is getting over. We had a question about this position uh, instead of Queen A3, C6 immediately? So, uh, and what happens if I take b takes c6? I guess the idea was just to uh, prevent the playing, you're playing c6 later and but then... then I think my king will be just comfortable on d7 because yeah. my bishop is now protected. So yeah, I don't know. This was uh, actually several of our Twitter <coughs> followers were, were suggesting this, but uh, <coughs> you had you looked at that uh, you and you just dismissed it? No, actually, uh, when I played king e7, I was just so optimistic already, and I didn't even calculate so much. I just he played bishop g6. He was already in deep time pressure, so okay, I just saw the position is interesting, and I don't want draw. I mean, okay, I'm uh, in not a good tournament situation after all. Uh, I only have uh, five out of seven, so I thought no, I have to play for a win, and it does. It, and it seems that it's justified to play king e7. So so play king e7 really, really without calculating uh, a lot because I didn't want. To um, him to use my time for calculating things, so I, uh, so I decided, okay, first play, and then we start calculating, but on his times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a a bold strategy. In other words, yeah. <laughs> a draw is uh, almost as bad as a loss as far as the tournament standings go. So you might as well go for it. <coughs> well, but not only that, but also, okay, I, I will. I'm obviously not happy with my general play here. I mean, uh, <coughs> So once having an interesting game, I mean, it's, it feels very bad to finish it like this. So, so I thought, so I thought, okay, with King E7 doesn't seem that I'm losing the game. Okay, if, if it finally ends the draw, I mean, what's the problem? So, <laughs> so then. Okay, so yeah. after. Yes, now he cannot take on A7 because of Rook A8. Okay, he can, but uh, after C6, B6, I'm obviously better. So now I play King C8. Um, Queen seven c six. Okay, uh -huh. so my idea is to put my bishop on e five. No, it's I, I, I would rate my position as a better one already because even though he has four pawns, but somehow with this strong bishop, mm. I know if rook before you just go rook c seven. No, no, I want uh, to uh, bishop b five, five again. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Idea, so. uh, cool, slightly game. So. Okay, and uh, what is interesting, he cannot take on d five because I take with the rook, and he has no time to win my queen, of course. So. You know, I liked my position. But, uh, I understood that I might be not winning, but I, I was sure that I cannot be worse here with, with so much activity. So, but now one funny thing happened. He played queen a8, king c7, uh, queen a5. Okay, I play king b8. So rook a4, bishop b5. This was my plan. H3. And I almost touched my bishop to play bishop c7, <laughs> thinking that like he would play queen mm. a7 check. My god, so that would be really <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> would you have come in the commentary room if that had happened? So? Would you have come in the commentary room if you had to play bishop c7? Um, no. <laughs> no, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> so? For sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
<laughs> so we're glad you played King C8 then. Okay, yeah. fortunately I still had some time when I saw this I thought, yeah. ah, okay, and then I realized and see this probably the, the best move because I'm protecting my rook because I already saw some tactical ideas like rook takes g6 and queen f2 so uh, I want to threaten this kind of ideas but was this okay. possible I, kn I know probably what you played was winning after rookie one could you also take care or mm, no I think bishop g2 is the best now okay so it was it was very strong yes so yeah. so the, then the question is what should he do instead of rookie one maybe he should try Okay, he can obviously play rook g1 just to try to defend for a while, maybe, but, okay, my position is just good, I mean, I play queen f6, maybe queen h8, well, I like the idea of queen f6, maybe then rook h8, I just want to have all the pieces attacking, so, <laughs> that's normal. It's very difficult for white to play time pressure, because, mm -hmm. uh, Black has one piece more, and it's a very active piece. So, it's, uh, and pawns don't count uh, until the deep end games. So, and of course, it's not my intention now to change pieces and g get into deep end games. So. Mm. But okay, I will not be surprised if computer would still find the defense for white on here in this position. But I just think that yeah, it's already difficult to play with. Mm -hmm. And okay, after rook e1, bishop takes g2, it seems that uh, the game is over. He can, I don't know, I didn't have it very clear what to do if he plays king g1. I saw that I'm not spoiling anything if I just play bishop c7, queen a8, check bishop b8, because he still cannot take my bishop, so... Okay, that's probably enough. Mm -hmm. So, the game finished, yes. rook g4, and yes. now rook d4. So, um, you mentioned earlier, it was, well, it was definitely a contender for best game prize, and you also said... But, uh, but I think in this case it yeah. should be, well, if it wins uh, the contest, it should be given to both players, no, not just to me, because, because okay, he made this moves like queen b3, knight e5, uh, very nice and very strong moves. So. And a very interesting game. I, I don't know if anyone back home on Twitter has any questions for... I think uh, mostly praise. Praise, okay. So you have a lot of fans out there yeah. praising you for that game. So, uh, <laughs> which is a uh, oh. <laughs> very oh. exciting chess. Oh, so yeah. yeah. So. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm glad that uh, such veterans as Artur and me can still produce exciting chess. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But a very exciting game. So, um, thank you. Alexei, and uh, good luck with the rest. Hopefully, Thank we'll see you, you again. So, okay.